splendor of the king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our god sing with me He stands And time is in His hands Beginning and the end Beginning and the end The Godhead three in one Father, Spirit, Son The Lion and the Lamb Lion in the land Hi, I'm Brian. It's my honor to welcome you to worship as we continue in the I Love My Church message series. We're honored that you chose to worship with us online this day. Wherever you are, whatever you're going through, we're here for you. Thank you for joining us for worship. We've got some great things going on. You can always check in on our website, sign up for the e-newsletter and even a daily devotional. And don't forget to fill out your connection card when you're done worshiping with us today. God bless you. I love my church. I hope you do too. It is a blessed day to be together to worship the Lord. We came from different backgrounds. We are now in different places. But because the Spirit of God is one, we all are one in Him. And we read in the Psalms, telling us, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So people of God, please join me as we come together to worship the Lord. Please join me from Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. 
great is the Lord. He is the most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Amen. As we approach our holy God, that remind us when Moses went up to the mountains and approached a holy God, and God told him, The Lord, the Lord, merciful and gracious God, is slow to anger, abiding in love and faithfulness, forgiving iniquities, rebellion, and sin. And people of God, we come to the same God, God of Moses, and we have the same promise in Him that if we confess our sins, He is merciful, He is gracious, He forgives our sins. So please join me as we come to our Lord with prayer of confession. Lord, you are the one true God. The world bombards us with images, headlines, and social media posts, and we are swept up in the destruction. We would rather promote ourselves and fight over politics than listen to others and take on their burdens. Forgive our foolishness, Lord. Continue to show us your ways and help us focus on you so we can continue to worship you our trying God in spirit and truth. Amen. Our Lord is the same, yesterday, today, and forever. He forgives our sins in the past, and He is still the same for today. So, people of God, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, we are forgiven. Amen. Hi, I'm Chuck Deckard. My wife and I have been members of RB Community for two years. We felt at home immediately and especially appreciate the many opportunities our church provides for us to make a difference in our local community. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds 
by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. Hear the word of the Lord. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm sharing this message from the beautiful courtyard and garden of the Mission Basilica San Diego de Alcala uh, Mission, uh, one of the historic missions uh, that was founded in the late 1700s, early 1800s uh, throughout uh, California. And I'm standing right next to the uh, famous wishing well of St. Francis, uh, thinking about those who come to a wishing well to make a wish. And a lot of times when we come to a wishing well, we come with the wish in mind, right? And we throw a little money in and we make our wish and we look to see if it will come true. But there's a lot of people who have a pretty big, great wish in their life and they may not even be consciously aware that they have this wish. Oh, they are trying to fulfill it some ways. They don't even realize it at times that they are, whatever way that their life can do it. Uh, and they try all kinds of different things but they never feel the fulfillment uh, that they're really looking for. And I think that's a lot like the woman of Samaria that met Jesus at the well. She was looking for something. Oh, she came for the original wish, which was to go to the well and get some water. That's no problem. She did that probably every day, maybe twice a day. But this time, when she went out from the city of Samaria into the well, she found Jesus sitting there. And uh, she was getting her water, and Jesus asked her, well, would you like to have living water? And she jumped at that chance and opportunity because she was thinking kind of surface level, you know, the original wish of having water, not having to come out to this well every single day. And uh, he said that this would quench her thirst forever so she could do other things than worry about going to the well. But Jesus was talking to her about something a little bit deeper. He knew that there was a need in her life, but she may not have even realized. And it was a need for intimacy with God. It was a need for intimacy. And she was trying to fill it every way she could. As a matter of fact, she was trying to fill it through a lot of different relationships with a lot of different men. And Jesus told her, you're never going to find the intimacy that you're looking for with all these different men. Oh, it may work for a little while, for a year, it's exciting, things seem to work out, but then overall, it never really fulfills, fulfills what you're really looking for. That only happens when you have the living water that I have to offer you. Then Jesus says something I find very interesting, and if you don't have an understanding of uh, the idea that Jesus knew she was looking for intimacy, then it doesn't seem to make any sense because he says to her, well, 
Now, you Samaritans worship in that hill over there. Us Jews, we worship in uh, the temple. But it, do it doesn't matter whether you're there or in the temple or whatever. You have to worship God in spirit and in truth. And he was telling her that the only way that you're going to fulfill that need, that greatest wish that you have of intimacy, your only time you're going to find that is with Worshiping God in spirit and in truth. That's what she had to do. Didn't matter where she was at. She had to be connected to God. And Jesus was the way to connect with God because Jesus was the living water. And that's what he was really offering her. All right, this teaching of Jesus we're going to apply to uh, our society and to us personally in the next segment right after this interlude. So I'll see you then. Well, welcome back. We've been uh, standing by the uh, wishing well of St. Francis in the courtyard of the mission in Mission Valley and talking about Jesus's interaction with the woman who came from Samaria at the well and was really searching for something. And we talked about how what she was searching for was really intimacy 
with God. But she didn't even really realize that that was the issue until Jesus began to point it out to her and say that he was the living water that would enable to really quench that thirst of her desire coming to this so uh, well of her own life to say, what's missing? What's the gap? You know, and how can I fill that? Well, I don't think she's any different than a lot of people in our society today. I think there's a lot of people who are really searching for something. Oh, they may not even realize it. You know, they're, they're just feel that there's a separation. But we know that's true because God created us to be in relationship with him. That's how we find wholeness. And when sin came into the world, it separated us from God and it created a hole in our lives. And ever since that time, people have been searching for some sense of wholeness, some way to fulfill that gap that they feel in their life. And of course, they've done it in a lot of different ways. We see that in our own society, right? Some of them have, some of them been like the Samaritan woman and they've they filled it by having various relationships with different people, uh, all kinds of sexual experiences, whatever they could to do to try to find it. And, and it's like it's like giving kid uh, some kid a candy, right? I mean, they're they want some candy and you give it to them and it satisfies them for a moment. But when that candy's gone, then then they want it again. There's no eternal lasting effect of getting this sense of wholeness that we're searching for, that sin created in our lives until we have the living, living water that Jesus brings. Some people, they try to fulfill it through, uh, through success. They're climbing up the corporate ladder, they're climbing the mountain, and, and they think, boy, when I get this success, that will really give me the sense of fulfillment that I'm, I'm looking for. And yet when they get to the top of the mountain, the vista that they see it's just other mountains that have to be climbed. Some people are trying to fill this gap in their life by alternative lifestyles and extreme lifestyles. But none of those things are going to truly fulfill us for what we were designed to be, how we were created to be by God himself to be in relationship with Him, just like Adam and Eve walking in the garden with the Lord. The only time that we're going to find that fulfillment is when we come to the Lord Jesus, who is the living water, who gives us the kind of, of, of quenching thirst of that desire uh, that's eternal. And it only happens through Jesus Christ. And I want to invite you to, uh, if you haven't, to accept that, to ask Jesus to come into your life and give you that sense of fulfillment that lasts forever, the living water, the same living water that Jesus offered to the Samaritan woman who is offered to us. And then, what do you do once you've been reunited with Christ, reconciled to God, having that sense of wholeness? Then your life is no longer driven by the desire for fulfillment, but you come at it from a different perspective. Uh, the perspective, really, that St. Francis had that I really liked when he established the order in the Catholic Church and all the fraternities that have risen up in that order. And one of the things about all those fraternities is, is that they take a vow that says that they're going to totally devote themselves to God. I think that's Good. Now, of course, in their orders, they devoted themselves to the sick and to the poor. And that may be what God is calling you to do. But, but for us, for us, whatever it could be, we have to fully devote ourselves to it. And when we do that, that's when we're really worshiping God in spirit and truth. That's when the, we have intimacy with, with God. That is true worship. Let's pray together. Father, I'm so glad for the story of the woman in Samaria who met Jesus at the well and who felt in her life, maybe didn't even realize it, but was looking for something. And she looked at all kinds of different relationships. But what she really needed was Jesus in his living water. And Father, if we're in that situation, we ask that you might show us in a real 
true way, that which has separated us from you so we can get rid of it, claim Christ, and be in relationship with you. And then, Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we might be able to live a life of gratitude, a fully devoted life to you in the wholeness that you, you've given us through Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, my name is Tom Inslee. My wife Wanda and I have been members of RB Community for 20 years. And during those 20 years, we've seen a lot of changes in our family, but none like the changes that we've seen in the last four or five months. The changes include things like not going out to eat anymore, not meeting with friends in person anymore, not going to the gym anymore. But even with that, there are things that we need to do to make sure that we keep our family healthy. We still need to go to the grocery store. We still need to take our dogs to the vets for their wellness check. We still need to go see our doctors and dentists to make sure we're healthy as well. And when you think about health, we need to also think about the health of our overall family, our family of God. There are still parts of our family of God that we need to pay attention to, and the health of that family is one of those things. We're told in the uh, scripture at 1 John 3.1, John tells us, see what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. So even though we're not meeting in person at church anymore, like we used to, we still need to make sure that we do those things that maintain the health of our family of God. I find that giving is one of those things. I personally like to write a check every month because it reminds me of what I'm returning to God from what he's given me. I know that many of us like to do online and other ways of giving, and that's great. But writing that check means something special to me. As we go through these, these next number of weeks of trying to maintain the health of our family of God, we need to make sure that we keep in mind the needs of the church. They have not diminished. In fact, with, during the pandemic, many of these needs have become greater. So as we think about giving over the next few weeks, we need to keep in mind what God tells us in Corinthians 9, 7, where he says, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. When we do that, we're all family. We're all part of God's work. God bless. We continue our worship with a dedication of our gifts to the Lord. Thank you for your generosity in supporting the ministries and missions of RB Community. Let's dedicate our gifts together. Heavenly Father, you love us and we give our offerings as an expression of our love for you. We pray our gifts will be used to extend your kingdom. To you be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Instructions to give online are on the screen. And as always, you can mail in your gifts. And we do appreciate your commitment to our stewardship season and turning in your pledge card. Thanks for joining our church and being a part of it. And thank you for your gifts to the Lord. i
life eternal comes to us at the cross. I will not boast in wealth or might, or human wisdom's fleeting light, but I will boast in As we come to the Lord in prayer, we always know that He hears our prayers. Our Lord heard our prayers in the past. Miracles happened in the past, and miracles still happen for today. So as we come to Him, I would like to invite all of you to pray for many people around us who are sick. We have people in hospitals, people had surgeries, people are sick in nursing homes, we have many people who lost loved ones. And as a family of God, we come together, we pray, and we trust the Lord. And please, pray for our community, pray for our nation, pray for the whole world to come to know that our Lord is in a charge. Please join me in prayer. Let us pray. Great and heavenly Father, we come to you and we humble ourselves in front of you. For you are great, you are mighty, you are awesome. And you give us, O Lord, the scripture to teach us how to approach you and worship you. You taught us that to come to you, we come in Christ, and in Christ you accept us. Lord, we praise your name, that our God is the same. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, He is the God who was in the past and is still for us today. You planned for our salvation. Back in the garden, Adam and Eve were able to approach you and worship you. You created both of them as the one family, family of God. And Lord, we thank you. 
that when we sin in Adam, you, O Lord, planned for our salvation. And when the time had fully come, you sent your Son, that in him we can know you and worship you. Christ, who is the true temple of God, in him we see God, in him we approach God, and in Christ we are able to worship. Lord, forgive our sins when we many times feel short of your glory and accept us as we come to you in the righteousness of your Son. We are now like one family, sitting in different places, but we give thanks to you for the Spirit of God that fills us, the Spirit of God that makes all of us one family, the Spirit of God that brought all of us as one temple, temple of the Lord, and the Spirit dwells in us. Through your Spirit, we approach you. And Lord, we feel the pain of many people around us who lost loved ones. Thank you that you are the Comforter. So pray for the Spirit of God to come and to comfort them, to fill their hearts with joy. We pray for many people who are sick and looking for your healing hands to touch them. Those who are at home, those who are in the hospital, or those who are in nursing homes, they are looking unto you for healing. And thank you that you hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for our nation, especially we are closer to the election. Praying, O Lord, that everything will be according to your will. For our nation, we pray. For the community, we pray. And for the whole world to come to know you and submit ourselves in front of you, we pray. And thank you that you promise to hear us as we approach you in the name of Jesus. We pray that in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Messages from me. Take
We're glad you worshiped with us today. As we close this time together, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you overflow with hope by the power of Holy Spirit. Have a great day. Go with God.